Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place, and we can start by reviving the hope. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. 
Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is they don't expect it. The shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Ha <laughs> ha A change of clothes! What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal.
I've shut off the visual feed from my ocular inputs in the captain's quarters. So you're free to disrobe whenever you'd like. We've arrived at Phineas's orbital lab. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Ah, uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on, his more so than most. The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas V. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. There is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapon system? I shall happily comply with your order, just as soon as we have a laser weapon system. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? We are cleared to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. The Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. If we're going there, Please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. You are more than welcome, Captain. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Terra 2? Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, or it was when first built. Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It would not be unfortunate if something, like, say, a plague, were to wipe Emerald Vale from the face of the planet. Since you diverted power to Edgewater, the botanical lab shut down, and the deserters were forced to return to town. Meanwhile, the cannery's output increased, enabling the town's population to prosper. Thank you for nothing, Captain. I cannot say. First, I need to adjust my memory interpretation sensors, but I think my answer is yes. You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? I'm sure they are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Monarch? Ah, Monarch. The armpit of the Halcyon system. Her last functioning port town is Stellar Bay. Well, that is if you don't count Sublight's Smuggler's Port in Fallbrook. It's Sublight run for the purpose of shipping contraband, and before you ask, I don't know the coordinates, so I can't dock us there. 
I believe it has something to do with the planet being an uninhabitable wilderness and a lawless land with no corporate presence. You may wish to survey the residents in Stellar Bay for additional data points. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? How can I be of assistance? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I require a captain to pilot the ship. Without an identified captain or crew, I serve no purpose. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I fail to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board-certified jingle their favorite song. What happened to the captain who kept pestering his ship computer? The life support was disabled. Ha, ha, get it? As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. Does this work? Oh, damn it! Blast! That's loud! You're a deft hand with a mag pick. I'm just securing my ongoing experiments and securing myself. Mind the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor.
That's my communications terminal. This Sisney pigs make excellent test subjects. Also surprisingly nutritious. Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, cathanoids, cysty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. The one I gave you before your pod landed? Ruined beyond repair. Impossible to find replacement parts. That's Halcyon Manufacturing for you. Don't worry about it. I'm reasonably certain you're not going to spontaneously expire. No need to monitor your recovery. Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. Of course. What's on your mind? Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. Absolutely. Let's talk. Oh, goodness, no. I wouldn't survive ten seconds in the blackness of the Aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least twelve seconds before I'd lose consciousness and die of hypoxia. I enjoyed the occasional Aether Wave drama in my youth. Not anymore. All bored propaganda. I'd rather not be brainwashed. To answer your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. Remarkably well. After all, I managed to revive you without too many adverse side effects. We're even having a real conversation. That's progress. I still need your help, however. The sooner we discover the location of those chemicals, the sooner we can begin reviving the Hope's colonists. Get me those chemicals, and I'll revive the hope. Revive the hope, put a stop to the board. Stop the board, save the colony from destruction. Cause and effect. Simple, really. My progress is tied to your progress. We're in this together, my friend. I'm well aware of your scientific acumen, but you're far better suited to working in the field than I am. Leave the blackboard work to me. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. There's yet hope for the hope. Get it? We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading.
The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Can we talk? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Gosh, no, Captain. I aim to stay so long as I'm welcome. I figured June Lay and I could confabulate over wireless or by message. And maybe when we put into Groundbreaker, I could stop by to visit her sometimes. But only when you don't need me with you. I abso surely can. I'm a passing fair mechanic. Even Mr. Thompson would have said it's my only skill. But I'm used to working on cannery lines, AG loaders and the like. There's tricks about ships I ain't learned yet. All I'm looking for is a few pointers. I bet a lady who runs a whole station has forgot more than I ever learned. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Smells like grease and unwashed bodies, just as I remembered. That's not the point. This half would just knocked out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get you with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. Be a trick. Just arrived? Head over to customs. Wheeler needs to process you. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. Yeah, yeah. He's like the rest of those bored jackasses. All bluster, no grit. All you gotta do is square your shoulders and stand up to him. Bored ain't accustomed to disobedience. Yeah, because I knocked my foreman out with a tossball stick. But, to be fair, I wasn't the one who started it. The guy was insulting my Rizzo's Rangers. Look, if it's a crime to defend your favorite tossball team against slander and calumny, well then lock me right up. Only the finest group of tossball players ever to take the field. He's a spacer's chosen man though. So when the chosen beat my Rangers the other night, 
my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounge together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. You've got a ship, but you've never visited Groundbreaker. <laughs> you must have just dusted off from one of those dirt-side outposts. Sure did. And now we're in space! Well, welcome to Groundbreaker. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. Not stuck, per se. You could always throw yourself out the airlock. Of course, then you'd find yourself with an exciting new problem. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay, tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Ah, a handful of Sam cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? You noticed, huh? What can I say? We're passionate folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. Sounds like, yeah, but from where I sit, it's all coming through loud and clear. They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, Maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway.
Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing base. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Sure thing. He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Sure thing. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board. That is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Commandant Sanita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. If you're thinking to make a career here, don't waste your time. Full-time jobs on Groundbreaker tend to be inherited, or go to a fellow crew member's kid. Keep it in the family, you know. They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. Relative to the board holdings? Not really, but there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. Are you pulling my leg? You must be one of them long-haul freighters from outside the colony. Well, I won't hold it against you. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That group's what we now call the Board. Sitting around drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing base. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Glad to help. All right. Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera. She'll set you right. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker's not the most hospitable port in the colony. The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go. On your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Be seeing you. Hmm?
Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Chief Tennyson don't generally hire outsiders for station jobs, but you could try asking at Sublight Salvage. They got an office on the far end of the promenade deck. Anything else I can help you with, ma'am? Chief Junlei Tennyson. She runs the ship. Does a real great job of it, too. Her family's worked on it for, gosh, since it was built, I think. Back before the crossing. What's she like? I is she a good boss? Good as she can be, I guess. What with all the troubles Groundbreaker's facing. She could stand to lighten up, I suppose. But she tries her best to do right by folks, and that's what matters. No reason. Don't you trouble yourself over it, Captain. That was very convincing, miss. I think your captain almost bought it. Sure is, but she makes it look easy. She's real competent, our chief, even if she ain't real friendly. They're run by Miss Hagen. Half the tramp captains and contractors in the system have worked for her. I ought to warn you straight off. Scuttlebutt says some of the jobs they do aren't exactly above board. Downright anti-business, if you catch my meaning. Let's say there's been times when I heard somebody needed a thing, and somebody else had such a thing, but they weren't inclined to sell. Now let's say the one who had the thing suddenly found theirs missing, and the one who needed got one. If anyone asks, Sublight says it got salvaged from an old wreck. Case closed. If anybody could prove them criminals, the board would have put their foot down a long time past. They always got, uh, what do they call it? Deniability? Something gets nicked or someone turns up dead, Sublight says, hey, independent contractor, not our responsibility. But everyone knows what they're doing, top to bottom. Against is a strong word. Let's say that if you need something the board ain't inclined to sell, you might look to Sublight to get it. You might pay Sublight a shitload of bits for it, but that money gets passed on to their contractors, so in the end, it's still business. You must admit, there is a beauty to the order of it. Everything operates within the constraints of the grand plan, even organized crime. People do what they gotta to get by. Oh, sure, sure, sorry. Gets a mite boring at this desk, you know. Then I get to chatting too much, and Commandant Sunia's gotta reprimand me again, and... Oops, doing it again. Sorry. Oh, don't worry. Captain's real understanding. Can't speak for the captain, but I'm used to listening to folks drone on about their pointless, depressing lives. Awful generous of you, listening to me like this. This is the security desk, ma'am. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sunita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. Less than there used to be. Fewer freighters passing through these days. I spend some shifts just listening to the wireless. There's been a whole heap of good advertisements lately. Sometimes I tune in just for those. Sure, and stuff from outside the system too, off the uh, interstellar freighters. That's why we also have so many armed Mardettes on duty here. We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not... We just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. All right. 
I'm not so good at filing. Mix up first name and surname one, two, seven times. Well, folks are liable to start taking your filing privileges away. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty posting, I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time nor loitering. Do I look like your gossipy best friend? While I'm on post, I take my duties real serious. I would have no qualms whatsoever escorting you to a cell. Understand? Now let's not start a fuss. I'm just trying to do my job, and I can't do it while chit-chatting with you. We're the security force here on Groundbreaker. Started back before the crossing, you know. The original force was made up of a Marine detachment from the 77th Marine Expeditionary Unit, Trailward Fleet. Folks started calling us Mardets because it was easier to say. Guess it stuck. Got a hot one for you. Captain Gunner McRed, just 26 hours old. Uh, the posting, that is, not the criminal. <sighs> Allegations include several counts of flying under the influence, carrying open alcoholic containers, failure to pay docking fees, resisting arrest, and assaulting not one, but two officers. Kicked one right in the kneecap while he poked the other in the eyes. McRud's lucky we're too backlogged right now to hunt him down ourselves. But if our resources clear up and we catch him before some contractor does, I fully plan to lock him in ISO with them two officers he wounded, thinking he won't like that one bit. Swerving in the air was more like it. Then he crashed hard into the dock and tumbled out of his ship and fled on foot. Spilled Rizzo's Violet Spectrum vodka all over Officer Hartley. An affront of its own, considering none of us are approved for anything higher than Green Spectrum. <sighs> Dreadful, ain't it? Such blatant disregard for order. It's a real problem in the youth these days. It's true enough that he ain't particularly deadly, but the interest on each fine being compounded as they are means he'll be paying with his life insurance. Only way to cover it. Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the legwork. Oh, I will. Soon as the chief approves the personnel reorg required for a bounty dispatch. So, in about three to seven weeks. You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head. Or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck and skip speed to you. Can we talk? I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You were hearing things. No, seriously. Carry there was on. a lot of static at first, but then this voice. Said his name was Gran? This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. The board would like to introduce and other travelers that passage to Monarch is restricted for your protection. Canyons of acid and sulfur are the least of the horrors of Monarch. Anarchists live as one with the animals, lawless, savage, and unemployed. The board's embargo ensures that nothing can leave the planet and threaten our hardworking citizens. This has been Halcyon News, your only source for news in the Halcyon Colony.
Easy does it. Somebody was trying to fix this up, but looks like they ain't been here in a long while. I'm ready for this. Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Tossball finals are scheduled. Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. Upstairs room? Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought.
Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. You've certainly been blessed with an abundance of sass, haven't you? But it's your interstellar currency I'm interested in, not your nethers. Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Laws, maybe I should charge you double. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. Edna didn't seem to think so, and I trust the dear girl's judgment. Well, maybe not in men, but she knows her comms. So, like as not, Someone's been down there recently. And if someone set up shop in Roseway, I'd wager they got something to hide. Quite the opposite, I believe. Nothing terribly secret about gunfire, is there? If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Neither do mine, dearie. Old Gladys knows the value of good work. You'll be compensated accordingly, I can promise you that. Should you find yourself responding to a certain distress call, and in so doing find yourself in possession of certain valuable corporate secrets, well, then we ought to have a chat over a pot of tea and my famous cookies. Law bless your atoms. Here's a copy of the SOS recording complete with the coordinates. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Might want to acquaint yourself with Junlei Tennyson, Groundbreaker's chief. She's been trying to get a handle on this heat problem we've got. You'll find her fretting in engineering. I'd say she's a sweet girl, but law for fen someone call me a liar. What do you want then? My hard-earned wisdom? Ask the common folk, and they'll tell you it's on account of all the monsters on Monarch desperate to gobble you up. Because that's what the board tells them, you see. I think they made some fool mistake that would make them look bad to the rest of the colony, and they're trying to hide the evidence. Oh, 
little of this, a little of that. I buy and sell items that require discretion to dispose of. Knickknacks. Curios. I also knit throw pillows stuffed with the hair of famous tossball players. But that's more of a passion project. What about non-famous players? I earned quite a reputation as a fifth back during my penitentiary, uh, seminary days. You do have a favorable mop, I must say. But that's not what you wanted to talk about, is it, dear? Groundbreakers radiators. Been neither fine nor dandy for weeks now. Miss Junley's supposed to be getting them fixed, but the board's determined to get in her way. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, looking for ways to bring us to heel. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, ma'am. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. That's right, dearie. The only independent station in the colony. That's us. Though for how long, I can't say. That all depends on Miss June Lay. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, looking for ways to bring us to heel. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, ma'am. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. Go right ahead, sweetheart. Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Don't look funny at the crew. Heard they toss folks out of the airlock if they don't like your face.
This is absolutely We interrupt your regularly scheduled... How do you do? And uh, welcome to the rest and go. We used to be the go and rest, but folks never knew when to leave. Sorry. Business has been slow. Anything to occupy the time. Of course. Most of our supplies come and go through merchants. Company ships and salvage runs are the only traffic we tend to get. I try and steer clear of that creepy fellow in the moon mask. If there's a cost to being a company man, he paid it in spades. Fine, as long as the board keeps its grubby mitts to itself. Chief Tennyson holds the ship together, the promenade holds our economy together, and Sublight is the shoddy jewel in our rusty old crown. Our local garbage collectors. That Lilia Hagen never met a debris field she didn't like. She freely admits she planted her roots in Groundbreaker to escape board oversight, but I think there's more to it. She's unusual in the head, that one. Our chief Tennyson has an independent streak, same as her mother and grandmother who rode this ship on the crossing. There's a reason the board's embassy is a glorified shoebox. While Junlei Tennyson lives and breathes, Groundbreaker remains free. Didn't quite catch that. Uh, you'll have to speak up. Huh. Now that I heard. Gracious. I was just sitting down for tea. I found a handsome ceramic manda pillar at a salvage auction last week. my head down.
Impressive as all. You know that sound when you've snapped on an injector clip? Ah, <sighs> that's how you know your weapon loves you back. I got a full line of weapon modifications I'd be happy to show you. Why, it gets you the weapon best suited for your lifestyle. All the better for performing a little percussive maintenance. Self-improvement, including one's weapons, is always a worthy endeavor. Take your basic Deadeye Assault Rifle. Perfectly serviceable. But what if you like finesse? Slap a scope and silencer on that bad boy. Bunker down in a bush someplace and pop off heads. What if you like getting in close and making a lot of noise? Extended ammo magazine and a barrel heat sink to bump up rate of fire. A what? Sorry, hon. Here at Bell's Shells, we just don't discuss impolite topics, and W-A-R-R-A -R -R and T-I-E-S tops the list. Right here for a start. I got a fair selection. Modified weapons are my specialty. Uh, no and yes. When you install something, it pops in there real nice, but if you want to replace it, the originals tend to snap like plastic toys. Only takes a bit of elbow grease, and a spot of engineering know-how. Most ships have a workbench near the cargo hold, ours is in engineering. You could take your new toys over there if you feel like tinkering. So, what can I get you? I'm not winded. Honest. My, uh, boot was untied. Would hate for you to get left behind, or architect forbid, become lost. Seeking relief from the heat? Till June Lei gets those radiators fixed, I've got the next best thing. The radiators, they're fucked ten ways to Sunday. And we're all sweating buckets wondering when the powers that be are gonna get around to fixing it. That's not for me to say. But if you're feeling the urge toward helpfulness, you can find Chief June Lei in engineering. There's nobody who knows more about the station's guts. Any system you could name, June's crawled around inside and made it better. She doesn't come around here often, though. Don't see her as much of a drinker. Too straight lace for that. Only the usual. Marauders all over space. You ever wonder how folk who can't figure the bleeding edge technology of a spoon can manage to get ships into space? 
Nothing you need and everything you want. Can we talk? Put that away, you're making me nervous. think you're doing oh, sorry for the misunderstanding well sorry about the heat chief Tennyson will get the radiators fixed soon of course this heat sure makes a zero G brew extra refreshing it's an ale that's good for what ails you Oh, and it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. A lot of slogans to keep track of. Sometimes I forget. Anything and everything. Whatever you want, we got it. And when you need a replacement, we got that too. Just the opposite. Spacer's Choice items are always new, hot off the shelves, because customers just can't stop buying new stuff. Oh, sorry. I got the line wrong. Y you want me to do it again? Spacer's Choice items are always new, hot off the shelves, because customers just can't stop improving their lives with our fine products. You could go broke buying overpriced Aramid gear, or you could buy from us at a much more reasonable rate. That's why you should get a backup or three, become a frequent buyer, join our friendship rewards program. Program currently unapproved in Alpha, rewards and friendship pending. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our Consumer Care Headwear Division. You would never ask if you knew what it's like in here. I mean... Why, anyone can be a Spacer's Choice Consumer Relations Choice Specialist. Just keep your nose clean and aim for the moon. It's not the best choice! It's Spacer's Choice! Chase the freedom! Oh, I'm 
having a stellar day, and not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. I can see all of the top quality merchandise in the Spacer's Choice catalog, which is available here at a reasonable price. Spacer's Choice regrets that we don't sell toothpaste at this time, but we're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. Sprat wash, mouth wash, and manta floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. Don't miss out on these deals. You'll find none like them on all a Groundbreaker. Or anywhere in the Halcyon Colony. Trouble sleeping? Try our Lunar Eclipse Mix. That's two handfuls of pep pills washed down with a hearty swig of two-hour energy brew. The blast will send you through the stratosphere and the crash will knock you out gold guaranteed. Add an additional 10% to your purchase today and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares, our premier corporate welfare program. At Spacer's Choice, we care about your health and emotional well-being. That's why we put Martin through six years of vendor school only to make him wear this hat. Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. Now, are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is Spearmint. I, uh, you know, damn it. No slogan for that one. Uh, look, this hat, my job. It may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but they're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. Uh, speaking of interest, can I interest you in some quality budget goods? At Spacer's Choice, we cut corners so you don't have to. Heard of it? My orientation Aetherwave showed that famous Saltuna cannery. Which I'm sure smells as good as it looks. That's true. Yeah. I hope they're gonna be okay. That's a spacious choice, Spirit. Take what you have, polish it up, and make the best of it. So, what can I get you? Some soap? Everyone loves soap. Everyone will love you for using it, too. Uh, have a look.
the rail gliding championships. I didn't think any <laughs> Hell, I know space hands are doing I had a question about your plan, Mr. Vicar. Of course. The cosmos is generated and directed by the universal equation, also known as the grand plan. By contemplating the teleological order of things, one can achieve verity. Oh, um, right. You had a question? Never mind. That about answers it. Help! I'm locked in here! Can you get me out? Watch out, Captain! Their death. Our survival. Could I have a word with you, Captain? Uh, it smells awful. I'll die in here. Just get me out. Thank you, stranger. Shit, ain't that a relief? You have no idea how good the air on Groundbreaker smells until you've been trapped in a tiny bathroom with an overflowing toilet. Thanks again, friend. Time stood still. I was aware of nothing but the smell. Ugh, could have been days. Ah, shit. That means I haven't clocked out in days. Song is gonna have my ass for wage theft. What usually happens on this partially pressurized rust bucket? Something broke. Well, actually two things broke. First, the damn toilet overflowed. When I came to clean that up, the damn door decided to close and lock on me. You're gonna shake me down after I was trapped in a shit-covered bathroom? Is that how it is? Fine. Here's every bit I've got. That enough for you, or do you want my shit-covered clothes as well? I will. I will preserve my dignity. No one can take that away from me. I've seen you limping a bit. You all right, Mr. Vicker? Need us to slow down? What are you implying? I am perfectly fit. My uh, knee is just acting up. There's no shame in being older, Mr. Vicker. Don't worry. The captain and I will take care of you. I need neither your advice nor your pity, young lady.
back to the old cubicle to watch the latest episode of my serial. What's a nice boy? Atlantic. Bacon with Ed. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regular schedule. they do with their waste. I guess they just chuck it down here. Where's it all go? Uh, how about I stay up top? You know, keep watch. Okay? You don't seem to like traveling with us much. Why in the architect's name would you say that? It's just that you're real... grouchy. Kinda all the time? I'm not grouchy, I'm just... just... irritated by inane questions. Yeah, see, when you say it like that, it makes me wonder. Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastards. Yeah, no one wants you on Groundbreaker. These stairs are board property. Disperse now, or I'll detain you for trespassing. Oh, real scary. You're really gonna arrest us on our station? Yeah, this is Chief June Lee's shit. You don't know shit here. Step back! I'm required by I'm just gonna party. hang in the back and try not to touch anything. You'd think the board and its agents would be more content, sitting at the top of the system's food chain as they are. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. You must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, 
Him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? It must have been lost with Alex, then. One more tragedy to top the pile. Tell me, how did he die? Oh, awful business, that. But why? How? No, no. Best not to ask after the gory details. Right, right. You're going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there. I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go... Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? You haven't read the posters. He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. Well, Alex knew, or he said he did. And you have his ship. Maybe he kept some records around, or a conveniently placed note on his bedside table. That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, oh, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. It's fine. Really, it's perfectly fine. I understand. Now, if you've nothing else, please see yourself out. I'd like to drown myself in work. Be my guest. A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. Ugh. Law, but it's miserable. My underarms are damp. How can I be expected to work in these conditions? Chief Tennyson is supposedly looking into the cause, but I've seen no action from her. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. Good law! Who'd want to go to that toxic hell pit? No. Emphatically no. Unequivocally no. Immutably no. Best to be clear, I believe. I'm the certified representative of the board's interests here on the Groundbreaker. I'm their eyes, ears, and... Busy little hands. I have few complaints. Oh, you've noticed my friends. Wonderful. Aren't their guns very large? Tremendously impressive. They're here to keep the peace, of course. Precisely. Groundbreaker makes much ado about its independent status and so resents any board presence, no matter how benign. When the alternative is board guards at their gates, yes, I do. They don't see it that way, of course, but I can't say I much care. 
Ask away. Captain, I was hoping for a word. Have you seen this man? Reward offered for information leading to the capture of Lord Terrorist beneath Wells. Hearty greeting, potential customer. Welcome to Auntie's Kitchen, a home-style consumable protein dispensary. May this unit dispense proteins for your ingestion. This unit is programmed to simulate shock at such assertions. Shock simulation non-functional. A trouble ticket has been filed. Shock simulation restored. Initiating shock subroutine. How? There, you. Shock subroutine complete. Estimated guilt level of customer increased by 35%. Resuming protein dispensation protocol. May this unit dispense proteins for your ingestion. Beginning dispensing sequence. Please unblock all relevant facial protein ingestion tubes. Handled beautifully. I'll keep quiet. You look like someone who's taken their share of cuts and bruises. Need some armor? Maybe it's a bit secondhand, but that's only a testament to its durability. We also have a line of specialized melee weapons. For those times you have to repel borders, but don't want to risk a bullet through the hull. Not me, but it's in my blood. After the crossing, my family worked Eridanos, indentured to the corporations. Not from around here, are you? After leaving Earth, you worked a local gas giant from a floating refinery. Dangerous work. I was born in the corporate labor, but I'm the first one of my family to buy my way out. That's why I settled on Groundbreaker. It's the last bastion of freedom. Everything I sell is fresh from the forge. Technically, the metal formed billions of years ago, but it's freshly in this shape. If you're hungry, you've come to the right place. I've got a fresh ground batch of Spratwurst cooking. They're terrified to lock in the juices. How about a grinder's dozen? You know what Sprats are? Space rats. The laboratories of Spacer's Choice found a use for this limitless frontier resource. Sprat meat is plenty tasty when properly prepared. We grind them up in sausages, then terrify them in their own juices. Terra Frying is a Spacer's Choice brand secret. 
a mix of 13 herbs and spices, plus a dash of modern chemistry. Legally? No. The terra frying method was developed and marketed by Spacer's Choice. Between you, me, and this grinder, I've been through lean times. If there's one thing you learn on tramp freighters, it's how to make near anything edible. Might be that this old space hand put a few words in the right ears, and could be that Spacer's Choice liked sticking it to C&P by R&Ding our own special meat. Absolutely not. Spratwurst, in all related terms, are registered trademarks of Spacer's Choice. Boar, the other meat, is a registered trademark of C&P. Everyone knows our company and theirs are nothing alike. Just as well, near about time for me to go check on the trap. I mean, to unload another crate of farm fresh sprats. Long as you don't mind me grinding Spratwurst while we talk. Little things don't make themselves chewy. At least not yet. I'm sure modern science will find a way. Just as well. Near about time for me to go check on the trap. I mean, to unload another crate of farm fresh Sprats. Fresh from the grinder, any hour. Sublight salvage. Their front looks surprisingly on the up and up. You reckon we can shop here, or is it all spoke for? Sublight for life. Corporations never lifted a finger for me. CNP chicken and potatoes at CNP. CNP pancake with CNP Boston baked beans. Anywhere, you hear? You should give our latest product a try. Ollie Ollie Toxie Free. Now with activated charcoal. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Make a choice. Spacer's choice. Uh, no, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, excellent. Yeah, that was intentional. As the face of Spacer's Choice, it's my honor to be a public figure. Who needs privacy when you have job security? Uh, have a look.
I know she's in there, Emfuru. I expect you out here again. Canned surfish is already sold out again. Who knows? Halls are scarce. Back in Triangulum, there were hundreds of space hands idle. I heard Parsi was up somewhere around here. Rizzo's purple berry punch. Hey, you got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine-looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. Sure, an interview. That sounds fair. I mean, first time for everything, right? Ask me anything you like. The foreman told me my biggest problem was that I didn't take orders. I told him my problem is not with authority. It's with jackasses. So yeah, I guess my biggest flaw is that I don't suffer idiots. Hope that's not a deal breaker. Uh, it's delicious. Mock apple pie and a triple kale crust, maybe with a little cream on top. Classic. Are you kidding? I love a good fight. One time, I took an autoloader's head clean off its servos with one swing of a tossball stick. You can count on me in a scrap, boss. That's a promise. Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not gonna regret this. I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is gonna be great. You got a crew now, Felix. Are you free to talk? Welcome back. Do wipe the blood and space dust from your feet in the entry bay. Thank you.